What's up YouTube? I'm Mr. No Name or Max as people know him in the real world and today I'm bringing you guys an in-depth analysis of a 2v3 gameplay we got uh, the other day and basically this was originally going to be live but the recording failed so I decided hey let's go over let's just do an in-depth thing let's try and see if you guys can learn from my mistakes my uh, successes here so I left this long part here so I can talk a little bit to set things up because there is some important info so the first thing is that we won the first game 3v3. Um, they didn't say that we couldn't use a substitute. We were like, hey, we accidentally put the wrong person. Can we use a sub? They didn't say anything. They started it, so we played with them. They got mad. We won 6-5 on their host, um, and so then they made us play 2v3 on our host. Stoned is the host, so a few things with that. So number one, they're feeling overconfident because we barely beat them with an even match, so how in the world are we going to win with 2v3? Second thing is that Stoned is host, so the priority is on him. Um, they should be targeting him primarily because if they kill him, they should easily be able to pick me up. But also my focus is to keep Stoned alive to get him into fair gunfights because he'll win every single fair gunfight. That's how host works. So just trying to set things up for him. Another thing is that we're trying to play as slow as possible because our correct third could hopefully get on in time for third map here. So right away, we're going for actually a quick plant here just because we saw nothing at A. And so I'm just watching L wall because a common thing for people to do is to go bottom Gina's to tank and then L wall, but we didn't see anything. And I had good timing there turning to watch flank. Um, I just had a feeling that he should be on flank at that point. So we have two down at this point. Uh, we're trying to watch as much as possible. There's a couple places we could go to watch it together better, but we wanted to save those strats for later rounds. We do have the man advantage right now. So we were feeling pretty confident. Teammate goes down here and this, it was a weird situation for me, so I could either just wait back and just keep waiting and then challenge bomb, or I could go ahead and push. I decided to go ahead and push, and it wound up working because he failed the jump and then he reloaded instead of picking up bomb. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't really shoot him through the fence. That wasn't really an option. Um, probably the best play for me to, to have done there would have been to slowly kind of walk where I'm looking both ways over to the little uh, white staircase there and then check bomb from there. Um, but yeah, that there, it was a little bit of an iffy situation there. So going into the second round, we're on defense and defenses, we know we have to play a little bit weird here because we're at a man disadvantage here. So there's a lot they can do. We can't watch everything really. So I decided to just kind of lock down A and he decides to go B. Um, obviously, I don't see anything over at A, and he calls out that they're going B. He gets the snipe, so I'm trying to rotate over to him as quickly as possible. He dies. I see one mid-map here, and I go ahead and pick him. And then I make the mistake of hopping off the tank. Now, I should have stayed there. It's a 1v1, and I have really good vision of everything, and obviously, he's going to try and push me. And because I hopped off, he was able to get set up have it pre-aimed and everything the two options i had there were to have run immediately away or to stay on the tank and watch crosses for at least a good 10 seconds to see if he tried to push me switching sides so that's what i should have done there search and destroy all right so this time we're planning on playing a little bit more aggressively we decide to go b we're feeling confident because we're keeping it pretty close and so we're just going to try and do what we can here uh, we take the long way around just so that there's less chance of them seeing us. And I, I call the guy out post there, try and set up a sort of a bait, bait and switch. Didn't really work out there. We didn't pick up the kill right away. But my teammate kind of forced him to run towards me and I pick up the kill. And we got another one in post there and he's shooting and I'm just trying to heal up. So I don't see anything pushing us anymore. So I'm just kind of playing back with my teammate here. We're watching flank and post and everything, just seeing if they will push us. And then my teammate picks one up, Top Antiques, he called that out. So I decide to watch Flank from a different position here for a second. And right here we get a call out that he's Water Tower. One of our characters saw it, neither of us saw it. Um, and we're trying not to line up too much here so he can't, you know, just get a nice little two-piece. So I'm trying to play back a little bit. I check to see if he decides to wrap. And I don't see anything wrapping, so we decide to go ahead and push up. Uh, he wanted to go back to B, but I called Let's Go A. Um... The main reason is because we weren't exactly sure where this guy went to. Um, I have a feeling he probably did wind up wrapping, so we were just kind of concerned. So I decided to go A, even though it was risky on the time. And I'm looking for him to wrap back towards A, and I decided to just kind of watch the L wall rotation again, because I highly doubt that he was going to push through the back in time. 
to get to us from that side. So we get into the perfect setup. This is the best thing you can do in a 2v1 situation. It's just you don't want to do this every round. It is possible to pick up both kills here. Um, a lot of people use this spot, so it's kind of scary to use. But if you've got, you know, host advantage, there's no reason you should lose it. And luckily, my teammate picks up the kill here. Alright, so going into the next round here, I remember this round distinctly because I make a mistake, but it, things wind up working out. So I'm going here, I'm pushing with my sub, and I'm going to go on this tank and switch to an AR. Now my problem here is that I didn't know exactly where that class was, and I panicked, and my shots went a little bit wild, so I didn't pick up the kill right away. So that was bad. I should have either just switched to the AR initially, or made sure I knew exactly where it was. So at this point, I know one is probably going to push me bottom Gina's, and one is going to be on our flank. Luckily timing worked out there. So my teammate picked one up at A, so he showed up on radar. And then the other two knew about where I was, so they tried to kind of move in on me, but my teammate distracted the one that was on far flank. And because I picked up bottom Gina's and predicted that, I was able to shoot this guy in the back. So things worked out there. Um, it was a little bit weird teamwork positioning, but it, it just kind of worked that round for us. Um, that wouldn't work every time, but we read them pretty well there. So we decided to try and do kind of another A push here. I try and get a pre-nade off, and I didn't get anything. Uh, we're just trying to see if they'll play, you know, overconfident like they should be. But at this point, you know, we're up, so they might start getting a little bit shaken here. So, we're, But we're just making sure. Let's see. All right, come on. Will they push through on us? Because our, the main goal in a 2v3 situation is to get that initial pick to make things even, um, which can be hard sometimes if you're playing a less aggressive team. But that's what we're trying to do here. We're not seeing anything, so we decided to go ahead and rotate over to B here. Uh, we could have continued pushing up to A. It, it's kind of a 50-50 shot there, because neither team has seen anything at this point. And I think we got a call out there, actually. I'm not sure. I, I, I don't exactly remember. But now we know for sure that there's one over here. And I'm looking to see if he wraps 10. I don't see anything. So I'm trying to set this up so that my teammate just has to watch flank. And I wind up picking this kid up to water tower, and unfortunately I thought another one would go gate. I was mistaken. I just, I didn't see this other guy at 10, so bad timing. My teammate's in a terrible position here because he is trapped between two people with only 15 seconds. He didn't have time to rotate and plant or anything weird like that. And if he had tried to challenge the gunfights there, he would have died um, because of the positioning there. You know, one water tower and one on the other side of post. There's no way he's going to win both of those gunfights. So... Nothing he could have done that round. If I would have picked, it, it, that round came down to me dying at 10 there. That was that was the reason we lost that round. So again this time, I'm going to the tank. And I'm going to wind up going to the tank too many times here. But this, this round, it's okay. Um, I'm just watching to see if they push up mid-map. Don't see anything. And I decide to nade B-bomb just to see if I can get a lucky pick. Because you will get those every now and then. He starts pre-firing through 10 like a maniac and I wind up winning the gunfight. And I also get a call that there's a sniper back there as well. So we know where at least one other person is. So I'm trying to rotate my, to my teammate here, try and play together and push things together because we've got things even now. But I'm just kind of checking crosses, checking mid-map. And I wind up going into hardware and decide to watch crosses in mid from a safer location while my teammate wraps just to make sure we're not out of position. So my teammate calls out, they're both at B actually here. He wins, and he has to engage. If he waits for me, they get bombed down. They get, um, you know, multiple, like they, they could turn, kill him, rotate through, all sorts of things. So I'm just trying to rotate as quickly as possible. But luckily my teammate winds up picking up both the kills. But yeah, in a situation like that, you don't always want to wait for your teammate to rotate if they're too far away. Go ahead and make the play. Um, I made a smiley face there to try and get in their heads a little bit. I don't like to be disrespectful in game or anything. I don't shoot bodies. But, um, you know, head games are an important, port, an important part of Call of Duty. So doing a smiley face and then shooting through it sometimes, you know, just something little like that can do it. Or if you're more disrespectful, you could teabag or shoot bodies. Um, it's not really a huge deal or anything. So we do another A push, and I see one on cross here. I'm trying to wall bang him. And right there, I made a call out to back up. 
My teammate is late to respond to the call, but he does have to be careful here on rotations. He winds up picking one up, but he dies for it. So I'm trying to rotate and actually pick up this kill. Almost turn on this kid, but now I know that they're going to pinch me. So I have I decide to push to L wall there because I knew that kid was going to be pushing me. I was hoping to go prone in time to be able to pick up that kill and then go get bomb, get it down before the kid at post rotates to me. Or go ahead and just play up and get the kid rotating from post. But I, I had to pick up that kill L wall. Unfortunately, it just it didn't happen. It was the wrong engagement, just a couple seconds off. So is what it is there so again this is where I do it too many times I go to the same spot I mean it's a really good spot but you just you can't do this every time and I, I stay here too long um, I decide to nade B again as well here didn't get anything so I'm gonna I decide this time not to push though I decided to back up because I'm like oh they're gonna push through and they push through just a little bit sooner than they normally do and also you know, I'd just done it so many times that they must have realized what was going on at that point. Everybody knows that nade spot. So it was just it was just bad timing there. But I was going to be in a 1v3 either way. Because my teammate there, he was actually prone crawling at that point. So he was going to lose that gunfight no matter what as well. So it was just bad timing for us mostly. But I made the same play, which was also a mistake there. So pulling out the thermal again, um, I decide to try and watch mid-map. And I'm a little bit late here. I decided to try and get him when he crosses and he actually wound up climbing tank and one was then top Gina's. So was bad play. I probably should have only checked mid if I was going to snipe. I should have trusted in my sniper shot, but I didn't. So that was a mistake on my part. My teammate did luckily get a kill though, and he's trying to pick up the others here. He's trying to figure out where they're going. Um, he does pick up this kill here. Unfortunately, my teammate forgets that he, the other one was at Gina's at one point. And uh, he winds up dying from top Gina's. You know, you would think that kid would have moved by now, but my teammate still should have checked it. Um, he should have remembered that call out from earlier, but, you know, we all make mistakes. It's just something that happens sometimes. Um, unfortunately, he couldn't get the 1v3 clutch. I mean, what else is he going to do? He's, he's doing really well at this point. So we're down right now. We're not too concerned though because even if we lose this we're gonna get our third in in time he's almost able to get on so we're like okay well even if we lose this so let's just play it like we're gonna win it so decide to watch a here and i have some shaky shots i don't pick up the kid which is iffy i call out that that was not him that he just called there and so right here i told my teammate i think they're gonna wrap b but let's stay at a for just a couple seconds let's see if they decide to push because they love to push flanks on us so we're like all right let's just let's wait a little bit there's no need to rush it um you know it's even right now so even if they get bombed down at b it's not too big of a deal uh we should have gone ahead and rotated at this point though we're a little bit late to rotations but it is what it is um luckily it winds up working out a little bit with timing there so now we're in a 2v1. I'm trying not to be too close to my teammate, and I'm looking for one to try and flank behind us to pick him up, and I was just going to shoot him in the back, but nothing was happening. So I'm staying a little bit behind my teammate here on rotations. And I wanted to check the same bomb site together. Unfortunately, though, we decided not to. Well, not unfortunately, really, but um, just because, you know, you can get that weird gunfight and then they get bombed down and then it's a 1v1 and the pressure's on you again. But we decide to split bomb sites um, just because we decided to have confidence in our gun skill. And luckily, things are going to work out here. You know, I'm spoiling a few things because I'm saying things a little bit early, but it is what it is. Uh, so my teammate's doing really well now. I'm not doing exceptional or anything, but I've been making good calls. I've been getting some important gunfights and things like that. Oh my goodness. Okay, we're going to do something a little weird here. Um, I had some weird issues there. My editing software froze, so hopefully I can get the timing back up. But uh, we're at the start of this, or we, we're just past the start of this round here. Um, so we're 5-5. Five, five. No matter what, at this point, we're happy because we're in their minds. Even if it goes to third map, we'll have our third, and they're going to be, you know, kind of worried because we got the, I mean, we took them 5-5 five, five playing 2v3. Uh, we decided to defend A again just because it's the easiest for us to do. Again, I decide to watch flanks, not seeing anything, so we decide to push through. Because at this point, there's no reason for them to have not gone B. It's easier for them, just get B down right away instantaneously. They didn't do that though, 
We wind up picking a kid out of position, and we decide to kind of sit here. It's a little bit weird, but we were expecting them to maybe try and cross back and pick us up or rotate back over. Um, so we're just kind of playing it patient. We've got it even again, so that's, again, that's the goal of playing 2v3, to just get it down to a 2v2. And we're not seeing anything, so we decide to eventually start moving here. Um, I should have waited a little bit more before moving, because we can both, we're, I mean, we're lined up right now, so that's a mistake. But I'm just watching to see if they push behind us, and my teammate is watching, like, our side of A. And my teammate gets picked here. I decide to run away. I'm trying to play time here a little bit, and I'm, I'm really concerned at this point. My teammate told me to go top hardware, but I decided not to. Um, so I try and pick that kid back then. I didn't get it, but I, was, I managed to shoot the guy through the fence there, so that's huge. I'm in a 1v1 now, and I decide, okay, I haven't seen him move, so he's got to be in 10. I challenge it, get the win. Um, you know, kind of lucky in some of that, but I wound up clutching up when I needed to. So, yeah, that's the in-depth analysis of this gameplay. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, after this, the one of the kids was very, very salty and kept insulting us and things like that. And they did wind up disputing because that's the way these kids are. But, um, you know, it is what it is. So, as you guys can see, we're coming to the end of this video. If you enjoyed it, then please like, comment, and or subscribe. If you didn't, then let me know what you, I can do better next time. Constructive criticism goes a long way, guys. Until next time, everybody, peace out.